Hi, welcome to Jade Kind Gaming. My name is Adam, and today I bring you another video in this series on world building. And today is on making settlements. Settlements can range from a small hamlet, a village, a city, a metropolis. Regardless of how big they are, a settlement is an area where a group of people have settled <laughs> together to benefit from each other's resources and abilities. You don't need to plan a settlement out in advance unless you want to. I do sometimes, and other times I simply make it up as the players have needs. If, however, um, you think the players may ever return to the settlement, it might be wise to at least take some notes as you go, even if you're just making up the settlement during the game. Um, whether planning the settlement in advance or making it up as you go, it may be good to have some information in the back of your mind just to help you with doing either. There are details and opinions on the size of a settlement and how uh, to express their differences in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Right near the start, that's what page... Uh, starting like page 16, 17... You know, they go village, town, city, um, and they, you know, list, you know, what populations, the kinds of way government, defenses, commerce, and organizations work. Just some ideas to help get you started there. Um, and if you happen to have the Pathfinder's uh, Game Mastery Guide, um, then there's even more information in that book on page 200, starting on page 202, the urban section. Um, and they kind of go over shape of civilizations, streets, traffic, and using settlements in play. They break theirs down by population range into Thorpe, Hamlet, Village, Small Town, Large Town, Small City, Large City, Metropolis. So a lot more categories, but it is Pathfinder, so of course. And, you know, they'll go into details of, you know, the dangers in a settlement, uh, the types of government populations. Um, the base monetary value and like purchase limits uh, in this in the settlements the uh, the spell casting that you'll be able to find like what what's you know the best spellcaster there um, availability of items um, and their modifiers like crime and corruption and economy and law and types of government and just example settlements is Pathfinder they <laughs> They overwork the subject uh, for you. Um, so between the two, of course, you can get some information from books. So there are some resources there. As far as I'm concerned, however, a good distinction would be that a village is small and only has to support the industry around it. Generally, it is a grouping of businesses that forms in a nice central location uh, that is easy to access by workers nearby, such as farmers who have fields and then need a central location to buy goods and perhaps sell what they produce to traveling merchants uh, who would then take those goods to larger settlements to resell. Uh, villages can, of course, form around other industries such as communities around a mine uh, or a logging village at the edge of a forest or fishing villages and so on. Towns are a bit bigger. They will generally form at convenient locations such as major crossroads that are well-traveled, or where a road meets a river that can be used for transportation in the same way, um, or a port town along the coast. Um, these likely grew from villages that happened to be at a good location, uh, for more people to arrive and want to work there. And uh, With towns, the settlement has grown large enough that it supports others within the town, not just the industry that is being done in the region around it such as, you know, people that are actually in the town are needing further support, so that causes more jobs, which cause more people. Um, but in general, yeah, just the idea, uh, it's in a good spot where a lot of the, say, those traveling merchants happen to then resell to go on, so it's, you know, they took smaller roads, and this is a good junction point, and then you get, you know, a bigger community like a town. Beyond those, there are cities. Cities are very large and have many people and competing businesses throughout. They tend to form because there is a lot of money available. Generally, cities are located where a few noble families or otherwise wealthy groups have taken residence. Uh, they have grown so large that the success of the city has little relevance to do with the industry that is done in the land around them. 
they can pull the needed resources from various towns and villages beyond their immediate influence because there are so many people and so much money within the city that the needed resources will travel to them. They go to the city because that's where the money can be made. The merchants are taking the resources there to make the money. So a city has as much of massive numbers of people as it is money throughout. Both, you know, through some many of the upper class and guilds and such that it started through, and eventually even just the masses, thousands of, you know, commoner, lowly folk, still overall have huge amounts of money between them. It's just spread thin on their end, so it's still just overall so much money that makes a city grow so large. And so with the options for different sized settlements in mind, uh, there's more you need to know. You know, generally, you're going to want to know why you're introducing a settlement into your game when you're designing it. If it has a specific purpose within the story you are telling, if you're telling, you know, a specific, you know, plot, and it, it has a purpose within that, the focus is going to be to design it so that it suits that purpose, that plot. That they can figure out what they need to know and progress through it. If, however, you are simply designing a sandbox world, and this settlement just happens to be along the character's path, then decide on something that will make it interesting. Was the city built within an abandoned giant's mansion, with city districts taking up what used to be various rooms of the once giant home? Is the village half burnt down after a recent hobgoblin raid? Or perhaps the town is protected by a fleet of golems that stand sentinel in the streets when not defending the town, leaving residents rather nervous that they could be considered a threat if perhaps they stepped a toe out of line. Have fun with it. When you're just designing a settlement, make it fun for the players to learn about and interact with. With settlements, you do not need to make a map of them. While it may be fun, I rarely do so and won't be covering that. At least not in this video. Um, however, you will want to know some details about them, uh, whether you're coming up with those details as you go or planning them in advance, um, such as common industries. Uh, important and influential buildings and groups, and what resources the players are able to access while there. To start that, there are some charts that can help. Uh, in the Dungeon Master's Guide on page 112, uh, you can find settlement information, um, basically details, notable traits about the settlement, as well as some random buildings that include, like, generators for taverns and warehouses and such. Um, so some basic, you know, coming up with buildings and industries there. And again, if you happen to have the Pathfinder Game Mastery Guide, there is further information on page 210 and 211. Um, the Urban Toolbox, they call it. Unique city decorations are cool. But then we get a whole list of shop names, which are named, like specific name shops, and then 100 city locations, which is just buildings, um, you know, that you could possibly find within a city. And so just as far as figuring out what's there can definitely be of help. And regarding influential groups, um, they could be guilds and noble families and such, but I plan to detail that further in a future video. And finally, for available resources, most Towns and cities are going to have whatever mundane equipment a character would want. Some towns have a limited availability for magical equipment, um, and cities are more likely to have access to a wider range of magical gear. Obviously, all that depends on the level of magic within your setting. Villages, however, might not even have all of the mundane gear that the players want. Perhaps the smith usually only does horseshoes and nails, and just isn't familiar with how to make quality weapons and armor the players might find themselves in a settlement that's so small that they're not able to get, you know, a replacement, you know, you know, upgrade to their armor or a new weapon or something. That might not even be available in all of those, so you can definitely limit things that way too. And that's about what I have for you on, you know, making a settlement. Uh, of course, I plan to do more of these world-building videos, so uh, if you have 
you know, specific, you know, questions or topics you want me to cover, you know, so comment down below, let me know. And if you have any, of course, any advice or ideas on building a settlement, let me know that down below as well. Um, otherwise, you know, YouTube stuff like like and subscribe is always appreciated. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.